Want to set up your ZI to get the best and riser sharp images? Let's do it. Now with firmware 2.0 available for the ZI, there's a new exciting way to set up the camera that not only gives you better results, but also makes it much easier to use the camera. How good is that? I've been using firmware 2.0 with the Z8 for a few weeks now and I must say it's definitely a big step in the right direction. I've been getting some fantastic results. While I personally focus mainly on bird photography, I would pretty much use the same settings also if I photograph sports and action photography or people for instance. In this video I will mainly focus on the new settings and especially the autofocus that have changed with firmware 2.0 and if you want to find out about all my Nikon Z8 settings and the best way to set up the camera I've linked a PDF guide for you down there in the description and I've also made a video about my sort of basic Z8 settings a little while ago for you to check out. Before firmware 2.0 I had my base autofocusing mode set to the largest possible custom wide area and I used that for me to find a bird and whenever the custom wide area would find a bird I would hand over to the 3D tracking that I had assigned to a different button on the back of the camera and that worked pretty well for perch birds. However for birds in flight this setup didn't work as well and I had to use a smaller narrower custom wide area to give me the best results and also not hand over to the 3D tracking for birds in flight. So definitely not an easy setup and to make it even more complicated and give me more control of the camera I had also assigned the single point autofocus to the function button 1 on the front of the camera. So overall I got some good results with this setup but I was never truly happy because it was quite difficult to use in the field and depending on the circumstances one autofocus mode or the other would work better and this is something that has definitely changed with the new firmware. I'm still using three different autofocusing modes on different buttons but now the majority of the time I just have to press one button in the back of the camera that gives me fantastic results so that's definitely a huge improvement and has also made it a lot more fun for me to use the camera. Before we get into the details of my new setup there has been one big change with firmware 2.0 especially for us bird photographers and that's the bird detection autofocus. So whenever we want to photograph birds now we need to go into the menu and change the subject detection mode to birds and that works really well and has improved the autofocus dramatically. Of course though, if you're photographing something else, you need to make sure that you're always selecting the subject detection mode that is the closest to what you want to be photographing. And also, if you're not only doing stills but video, make sure to change the subject detection mode in photo mode and video mode to the right subject. Because if you're not having the right subject selected, the camera will basically not find what you want to photograph. The first decision you have to make when setting up your camera is whether you want to do pure back button autofocusing like I like to do or whether you want to trigger one of the autofocusing modes with half pressing the front shutter button. I like maximum control over my camera in the field and that's why I'm personally disabling the focusing function on the shutter button but this is really personal choice and my new setup will work either way and you'll see why in a second. Instead of a custom wide area, my new base autofocusing mode is the single point autofocus. So just a tiny little field that I can move all over the viewfinder with the joystick. And that allows me to easily focus on whatever I want or to pre-focus on certain areas. And speaking about pre-focusing, this is one area I noticed that is very important with the Z8. If you don't pre-focus at all and your subject is very blurry in your viewfinder, chances are the camera will kind of go past it and onto the background and then will be stuck onto the background. Whereas if you practice good pre-focusing and always pre-focus in a similar distance to you where you expect your subject to appear you will have much better results with the Z8 and will usually jump right onto the subject if it can see it already. To set up single point autofocus we can simply go into the quick menu or the normal menu and select single point autofocus as our base autofocusing mode. However on my Z8 the autofocusing mode won't focus now because I've deactivated the half press focusing on the shutter button. On your camera you can either leave the shutter button focusing activated or you can do what I do because I've also assigned a single point autofocus and AF on to the function button 1 in the front of the camera. So whenever I press the function button 1 on the front of the camera the single point autofocus will now easily focus. So I think having the single point autofocus as your base autofocusing mode gives you the most control over the camera, allows you to focus on whatever you want, makes it much easier to pre-focus and it also looks a little bit more like what you're used to from your DSLR cameras. I also think it's a lot better to use than the wide area because you can focus much more precisely and you don't have all these different boxes in your EVF making it actually nicer to look through the viewfinder as well. Speaking of autofocusing boxes in your viewfinder there's also a new great setting available on the Z8 now where you can select the border width of the autofocusing points. I personally like number two that gives me not too fine and not too thick border but much better than before and it's easy to see now even those tiny field tracking the birds. 
and whether you're using Z8 or Z9 or different camera altogether, one area where you can improve your photography dramatically is to learn image editing. And I would love to help you with my masterclass and my pro sets. Both of these will help you to not only get better results, but also to become much more confident when it comes to image editing. With my pro sets, I allow you with just one click to transform your raw files to get amazing results. And in my masterclass, I teach you everything you need to know in Photoshop to get stunning results yourself. So if that's of interest to you, make sure to check this out down there in the description. So now we have assigned single point autofocus as our base autofocusing mode and we either trigger that with the function button one in the front of the camera or by half pressing the shutter button. However, this is just the base autofocusing mode and not what we're really going to use all the time. There's two more modes that we have to set up and the most important one and the biggest change with Firmware 2.0 is now that we can effectively use the auto area autofocus. That means basically we press one button on the back of the camera and the camera will start the auto area autofocus and will find the birds for us all over our viewfinder. In the past, this hasn't worked as well and was quite inconsistent. And that's why I've been using the combination of the wide area and the 3D tracking. But now the auto area autofocus has become so good that you can basically use it all the time or almost exclusively and get some fantastic results with the press of just one button. Enough with the words though, let's assign the auto area AF to the AF on button. And I'm picking the AF on button because this is the mode that I'm going to be using the most. I want it to be on the most convenient button for me. And to assign it to the AF on button, we go to the menu, go to the custom controls menu for shooting. And in there, we toggle to the AF on button. And once we're in that menu, we go to AF on and area mode. And in there, we go to auto area AF. And once we've selected that, it means that whenever we press the AF on button on the back of the camera, it will override our base autofocusing mode and will instantly jump onto the bird that we want to track and it will track it all over the viewfinder. How good is that? This setup with the auto area F on the AF on button has worked very well for me, especially for birds in flight and action photography. Sometimes when I'm tracking the bird, it will jump off for a few frames, but then it will also instantly jump back onto the bird. And overall, I've definitely gotten the best and most consistent results I've ever gotten with the Z8 with this setup. While the auto area F worked very well for birds in flight and action photography and larger perch birds, I found myself finding it a little inaccurate sometimes when I was photographing very small birds, especially small birds in the grass like these chestnut-breasted mannequins. And in these cases, I was kind of craving the 3D tracking again. And this is why I assigned the 3D tracking to the display button. So in certain emergency situations where I have a small bird in the grass, for instance, or I have a perch bird where I feel like the auto area F doesn't do the best job, I have assigned the 3D tracking to the display button so I can always press it whenever I need to. And to do that, we go again into the custom controls menu for shooting. And in there, we toggle to the display button. And for the display button, we select AF on and area mode. And in there, we select 3D tracking. So now if we find ourselves in a situation where we feel like the auto area F doesn't really work or jumps on and off slightly, we can just press the display button and have 3D tracking tag over and give us hopefully more consistent results. And if both of these modes don't work, we still have our third autofocusing mode, the base autofocusing mode, the single point autofocus available that we can move on to the subject and then press the function button one or half press the shutter button. And with that, mode, we should then hopefully get good results. What I noticed and found quite interesting when I was playing around with my 3D tracking button setup is that you don't always have to put an autofocusing field near your subject when you want to activate the 3D tracking. If I have my base autofocusing mode on the center autofocusing field and I press the display button to activate the 3D tracking, most of the time it would actually easily jump right onto the subject as well, similar to what the auto area F would be doing. Now you might say, why don't you use 3D tracking all the time? And the simple reason is that for most action photography and birds in flight, for instance, the auto area F is much better than the 3D tracking. The 3D tracking seems to be quite easily distracted by water or different backgrounds entering your frame, whereas the auto area F doesn't have these issues. However, for perch birds, sometimes the 3D tracking is better. That's why I usually use the auto area F first and have to emergency 3D display button available if I feel like that the auto area F doesn't do the best job and can then more precisely focus with the 3D tracking. But in most cases, I'm happy with the auto area AF. One little word of warning though, if you're assigning something to the display button, it means that you then can't toggle through the different display options on the back of your camera or in your viewfinder anymore. You can maybe assign this to a different button, but I'm not actually sure whether you can do that or not. But what I usually do is 
before I assign something to the display button, I go into my viewfinder on the back of the camera and make sure that I have everything I want to see in the viewfinder, the histogram for instance. So when I then reassign the display button and can't change it anymore, I'm not being annoyed because I have to change it back or I want to see something else. So before you reassign the display button, make sure that you have everything you want to see in your viewfinder and then reassign it and that will save you some frustrations. So now we have set up the Z8 with the single point autofocus as our base autofocusing mode that will either trigger with the FN1 button in the front of the camera or by half pressing the shutter button. We've assigned auto area AF to the AF on button. This is the autofocusing mode that I'm using most of the time on the Z8 now. And then we also assign our emergency 3D tracking to the display button in those cases, especially for smaller perch birds where the auto area F seem to struggle sometimes. And with this new setup, I definitely had by far the best results I've ever gotten with the Z8 in the field. The biggest difference for me is definitely the ease of use and the fun you have with the camera now, because most of the time you simply press the AF on button in the back of the camera and the camera will find the bird and track it for you or find your subject and track it for you and will give you fantastic results. The Z8 has definitely done a big step ahead, especially when it comes to the autofocusing with the new firmware 2.0. And if you guys want to know all about my Z8 settings, make sure to check out the video that I've done in the past and also my PDF guide I've linked for you down there in the description. Also make sure to give me a thumbs up for the video, let me know your thoughts in the comments, maybe some of the struggles you're having with the Z8. Check out my channel membership and hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video very soon. Bye guys.